So we're now going to go to our second speaker, who is um, Jacqueline uh, Joseph from Taiwan. She's originally from Hawaii, USA, now based in Taiwan. She's currently pursuing a PhD in philosophy while working in Taiwan as a university lecturer. In addition to academic work, Jacqueline works as a journalist and published writer across various platforms and is an activist working in the field of women's rights and gynocritical research. She's co-founder and chair member of the NGO Taiwan Women's Association. She also wrote a chapter on this topic, which is the encroachment of gender ideology in Taiwan in the WDI book, Women's Rights, Gender Wrongs. And uh, thank you so much for coming on again. You've been on um, WDI Feminist Question Time and you're the contact for Taiwan. Um, so Jacqueline, um, over to you. And thank you. I am a permanent resident of Taiwan, not a citizen, but I've been here for 15 years. Um, so I've been here for a very long time. And I have previously um, come on and given a much more detailed uh, explanation of what we've been fighting against for the past three years with our organizations in Taiwan against gender uh, identity ideology here. Um, today, I decided not to use my slides because I didn't want to be too repetitive, but I decided to do a brief overview of what's been happening and kind of where we're at now. Um, so basically, and I'm kind of shocked. I'm looking back at my notes and realizing that our organizations here in Taiwan, um, we've been fighting this fight now for almost exactly three years. Um, and what happened three years ago was on September September 23rd here in Taiwan, it was the first case of a uh, the Taipei High Administrative Court here issued a ruling allowing a trans-identified male to change his legal sex marker to female without any sort of sex reassignment surgery, which was the first of its kind prior to that in Taiwan for uh, 20 years, you had to go through quite a few uh, coops. You had to go through quite a lot of uh, uh, process and procedure to change your legal sex. You had to go through surgeries. You had to go through several years of living as the opposite sex. Um, psychiatric evaluations. Very, very few people did it. It was not common at all. And in September of 2020, the first uh, legal woman with a penis, which we say in our organization, um, occurred in Taiwan. And that's how our organizations started. That's how I became allied with all of the amazing Taiwanese people here that I work with. Uh, you may be wondering where those Taiwanese people are. Unfortunately, due to the threats and the harassment and the cancellations uh, that they face, most of the people that I work with in the organizations um, here in Taiwan remain completely anonymous. Um, I'm one of two people who are sort of a public face um, but it's not safe for my colleagues to, to present themselves, their names, their faces. So most of them are, are anonymous. So this happened in the fall of 2020. This was something that got our attention and we started to organize around, around this fact because it sort of came out of nowhere in Taiwan. Um, this this self ID and the executive yen, which is Taiwan's highest administrative legal branch, uh, funded research on public opinion regarding self ID, and, but <laughs> they did it in a very sneaky and underhanded way. They spent about thirty seven thousand U S dollars, which here that's about one point three million Taiwan dollars. That's quite a bit of money. They gave the money to lead the study to see how public opinion felt about, about self-declaration of, of identity and being able to self-declare your sex and being able to change your, your legal ID. They gave that to a gender studies department at a local Taiwanese university, which of course was incredibly biased. Uh, the project was called Legalization of Gender Change Requirements and Le Legislative Suggestions. Um, but <laughs> the uh, research was compiled 
through a series of questions conducted online. And according to people that I work with within the uh, Taiwanese community who work with the government, the research was completely inaccessible to anyone actually within the public. The, the institutions who had access to it really only linked the form to transgender or LGBTQ related forums. And by LGBTQ, I mean the TQ, just the TQ part, uh, related forums and organizations. So they paid 37,000 US dollars for a, a government funded public opinion survey, which they then only sent to, to transgender and queer organizations. So it was heavily biased. And it only, it really only sought to get responses from a few groups. So when we found this out, we <laughs> quickly, uh, we quickly decided to act. And this was how our organizations in Taiwan formed. We formed two organizations based around our pure rage when we heard about this. Uh, so we started to organize. And what we did first was we started to organize an online campaign. Um, I'm not sure how how tuned into social media and apps the rest of the world is, but East Asia very much is so. Um, people communicate um, through through messaging apps and online platforms um, primarily and very technologically uh, friendly. So women, Taiwanese women around the city of Taipei and New Taipei began a campaign using messaging apps, online platforms to share this information about this this public opinion survey and about self ID because not a lot of people knew about it and about what it meant um, and we started a pamphlet and a flyer campaign so we were going around we had volunteers going around by hand passing out thousands of flyers putting them leafleting putting them in people's mailboxes handing them out to people in the street talking to people having people talking to their friends family members of the community to contact their local legislators to complain about the verdict. Uh, we started an organization called No Self ID Taiwan, which I'll link into the chat um, when I'm done with my talk. We have a website that's in Chinese in Taiwan. Um, we speak Mandarin Chinese as well as English, where we track the, uh, the growth, the progress of gender ideology here. Uh, we started No Self ID Taiwan and we started the Taiwan Women's Association, which is a now government recognized uh, nonprofit organization. Took us a year to get that done, but we did that. And we started last year in 2022, we started two pla uh, petitions opposing gender self-identification on Taiwan's public policy participation platform, each of which separately got over 5,000 signatures. The first demanded a halt to the alteration of sex markers and ID cards. And the other was a demanded a clear separation of the safety of women and children, uh, the protection of women-only spaces and female safety being at the forefront of our, of our work in our organizations. Um, so with the passing of those uh, petitions, the government is required by law, because we got so many signatures, to publicly address um, our demands, our questions which will occur soon. Um, they, they are aware that we have enough people on our side to make things difficult for them. And um, another thing that is happening in Taiwan is that um, Taiwan will soon allow trans-identified people to participate in the National Secondary School Games, which is the largest uh, athletic games in the nation the, in this year in cross category categories, cross sex categories. Um, so it only recently came to light. We only just found out that a trans identified male competed as a woman in the Taiwan National Intercollegiate Athletic Games in 2018. Um, and he completely blew the uh, previous record out of the water by a woman. And the problem, the big, big problem that we're facing right now is that they haven't clearly defined the laws for what this means. Um, what happens in Taiwan is that often they go with public policy that they see 
popularized in the West and they just kind of push it through without clarifying any sort of laws or rules in place. So what we have is is them saying that in these national secondary school athletic games um, and intercollegiate games, we will allow anybody to identify however they want and compete in whatever category they want. They feel female, they can compete as female. They don't, they haven't actually provided the public with rules, regulations, and what that means. And the public is not happy about it. Coaches, the 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 uh, organization for coaches in Taiwan have said, you should wait a couple of years and provide us with guidelines. Uh, parents are, are not pleased about it. No one's happy about this, but they still push it through. So we're not sure what this is gonna mean because, um, because the these games are the the way that Taiwan chooses athletes for participation in the Olympics. So this very much opens the door to athletes who participate in these games could very well then become athletes that we see participating, representing Taiwan, who unfortunately, because of issues related to China, is called Chinese Taipei in the Olympics. But that could very much affect who we see participating in the Olympics. So that's happening this year. And that's something that we're paying attention to. Um, another thing that is happening is that, um, and, and this this is related, this is, and I'll, I'll, I'll relate the two issues. Um, it was announced this week that commercial surrogacy, which has been completely banned, in Taiwan, commercial surrogacy is going to be most probably legalized in Taiwan. Uh, legislature is looking to overturn um, the the ban on commercial surrogacy. Um, Taiwan is following the money in, in this particular situation. Taiwan was the first country in Asia to legalize um, same-sex marriage in 20, uh, 2019. And there was a rush of uh, uh, organizations and agencies who promote themselves as LGBT plus uh, agencies to help couples um, find surrogates around the world. So mostly in the United States, they came to Taiwan and they would help place couples here um, with surrogates, uh, mainly from the United States and hundreds of couples have participated in that with a cost of up to, uh, it, it's staggering, it's mind blowing, but the cost of up to 140,000 US dollars um, to go through this procedure, which is almost 10 times the average um, annual salary in Taiwan. Um, almost 10 times the average um, annual salary. So all of that money is being paid to outside agencies. And I think in Taiwan, um, again, following the cue from the West and seeing how much money is being made and also sort of the glamorization of surrogacy. Um, in Taiwan, we also, like Japan, have the declining birth rate, um, delayed age when people get married and have children. Um, Taiwan is 100% going to embrace the commercial surrogacy route. Earlier this year, we had the absolutely disgusting organization, Men Having Babies. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this organization. It's a nonprofit from New York run by a, a repulsively misogynistic uh, gay man who goes all around the world helping men pay for children ripped out of women's bodies. He came to Taiwan um, a few months ago. He will be back in 2025 um, because he sees that's where the money is. And along with that, there's been a new organization started in Taiwan called um, the Taiwan Trans Medical Association, which is the first of its kind happening in Taiwan. It is a it is the first organization of of medical professionals who are gathering together to profit and make money from surgeries and cosmetic surgeries to be done on trans identifying patients or anybody who wants to have those those alterations there are on the board there are no there are no experts in in gender dysphoria or anyone who has an expert in in um psychiatry there's no 
experts dealing with anybody with with backgrounds in with gender dysphoria or or anything like that. It's it's purely an organization that is promoting itself as this um, this this uh, altruistic sort of organization that oh we want to help people who who have gender dysphoria. It's it's purely a board of plastic surgeons who has popped up to to make a ton of money from what they they see coming with with self id so these are two things that are sort of looming on the horizon right now in taiwan that we're we're sort of keeping an eye on that are worrisome well i guess three actually sports um commercial surrogacy which was just announced this week which but we've kind of seen coming for a while and uh the the self id which hasn't really which hasn't really gone off yet but now with these medical organizations starting we we we're starting to see that coming um and yeah that that is uh that is what we are up against here in Taiwan, and that is what my allies, my my Taiwanese allies, and I are are keeping an eye on, fighting against, and and hoping to push back against as much as we can.